And many thanks to the Free Market Foundation and also to all of you for coming here today. I do appreciate it. And I think that the issue of the expropriation bill is a very important one. My heading is that it's better than before, but it's still bad. And why do I say that? Basically because it does now allow the courts, rather than the state, to decide on the compensation which is due to the expropriated owner. And the predecessor of this bill, the one that came along in 2008, was clearly unconstitutional in seeking to prevent the courts from having full jurisdiction <coughs> in deciding the measure of compensation. But what the bill gives with one hand, it takes with the other. And that is <coughs> largely because it's, many of its provisions are still the same as they were before. So it's really been tweaked rather than fundamentally changed. And I think the best way perhaps of understanding it is to begin with an assessment of what we have now, which is the current Expropriation Act of 1975. What does that do? It allows the Minister of Public Works, and only that minister, to expropriate land for public purposes, for example, for the building of a road or a dam. It also says that compensation must be based on, first of all, market value, which would be assessed on the willing buyer, willing seller principle. Secondly, that there must be damage for actual loss suffered, in other words, for all consequential loss, such as loss of income. If a farmer loses his land, uses the, his source of income, there was compensation available for that under the current law. And thirdly, there was an additional percentage, or there is an additional percentage, which is available at 10 or 10% 10 or so of the amounts of market value and damages for consequential loss. And that's provided as a solatium, the Latin for solace. Critically, at least 80% of the total due must be paid when the state takes possession with interest on the outstanding balance. And we turn now to the expropriation bill, and it gives the power to expropriate not only to the Minister of Public Works, but also to hundreds of organs of state along with all national departments, provincial departments, and municipalities. So that in itself widens the scope for expropriation. Secondly, it allows expropriation both for public purposes and in the public interest, but this reflects the Constitution's formulation, so it's not something to which objection could really be taken. In the public interest is obviously a much wider test. Compensation must be based on market value but this is less the four discount factors listed in the Constitution. And if you can read there, it's, in other words, the, the use to which the property is being put, the history of its acquisition, the state's role in its prior acquisition, and the purpose of the expropriation. And the idea is that you take market value and you see how much it should be reduced in the light of these four factors. And there is no provision for damages for consequential loss, so the implication is that those would not be payable. In addition, it seems that payment need not be in cash because the state will be able to decide on the manner of payment. And critically, there will be no right to the payment of 80% of the compensation due when the state takes possession. There is a reference to that in the bill, and I think some people have assumed that means that there will be such a right but there are two provisos which are very important. The first is that the state, in its notice of expropriation, can specify a later date than the date on which it takes possession. And it's possible, of course, that expropriating authorities will take advantage of that and that they will specify a later date, in which case the state will acquire ownership and possession before it has paid any money at all. And then the second clause, which needs to be taken into account, the bill says that compensation becomes payable only when its amount has either been agreed with the state or decided by a court. So again, that indicates that if the agreement is only reached later or the court decision is only reached later, people will lose both ownership and possession and have no money in their hands in return. And critically, as in the current act, the state takes ownership and possession by notice of expropriation to the owner. That notice of expropriation will specify the date on which ownership passes and the date on which possession passes. And in law, on those dates, that will be the effect. Ownership and then possession will pass to the state. 
And as we were saying, the state need actually not pay any compensation before it takes possession, if it takes advantage of these provisions in the bill. And that means that effectively only expropriated owners with deep pockets will be able to use the right in the bill to go to court and challenge the measure of compensation. If you're a farmer and you've already lost your farm to the state, you've lost with it your main source of income, how then can you afford the heavy costs of litigation, which as we know can be very prolonged, it can take two or three years even to get a court date, and if there are appeals, the process could go longer still. So in practice, if you have lost ownership and possession and haven't received compensation, this will put great pressure on you to agree to whatever it is that the state offers by way of compensation, because then at least you get some money. Thank you.